Hey all, this is part 15, and we're going to be adding the contents of an array to another array. Uh, so that's the case we want to consider, and we're also going to consider that we don't want to really want to change either of the arrays. Uh, we just want to uh, somehow add the contents of both arrays together and then have access to those like accumulated contents. So this is a rather large example, and the reason that it's so large is because we're going to demonstrate a couple of different um, Result of concat. I feel like I changed that. Hang on a second, let me refresh this. Um, result of concat. Eh, maybe I didn't change that. Anyway, that's no big deal. Um, so we'll copy all of this and paste it in here. And I'm going to comment out all of this. And the reason is, is that we're going to do a couple of different steps. So we have three arrays, one, two, three, A, B, C, do, re, me. Uh, the result of concat is going to be equal to array one dot concat array two. And then we're going to have the result of uh, concat one log to the console. And then we're also going to prove that array one and array two are unaffected. So if we run that, we'll see concatting array one and array two together gives us one, two, three, A, B, C. And neither array one nor array two has been permanently affected by the, by the concatenation. Uh, now we're going to take that one step further and we're going to say the result of concat2 is going to be the result of concat1 which again is this array that we created here uh, dot concat array3 which is going to add the elements of array3 to the end of the elements within result of concat1 and save that in a variable called result of concat2 again not affecting array3 or result of concat1 and again we're going to prove that array1 and array2 still aren't affected. So run that, console output's going to be rather considerable, but concatting array 3 into our previous result is, this is the one that we're looking at, so 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, do, re, me. None of these have been affected. So result of concat 1 stays the same as it was previously. Array 1, 2, and 3 are all uh, similarly unaffected. And the last thing that we're going to do is show a different way to get the same result, which is what we did previously was to say array 1 dot concat, say uh, array 1, dot concat array 2, save that in a result, then that result dot concat array 3. And we get a resulting array that is the 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, do, re, me. In this case, we're going to say array 1 dot concat array 2, and then array 3. And we're going to pass those both as arguments to concat. And it's actually kind of cool. Concat will do that ad infinitum. You can just keep adding new arrays to it, and it will just keep concatting them. So if we run this, we're going to see a lot of console output. Let's focus on the last part. So concatting multiple arrays, we get the exact same thing as we do when we did from our previous uh, version of it. So with all that in mind, let's think about a way that we could apply this in the real world. So we've got a, several arrays representing items on a menu. We've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. And what we're going to create are three uh, results of concatting separate <coughs> excuse me, elements together. So brunch items are going to be breakfast items concatted with lunch. Uh, happy hour items are going to be lunch items concatted with dinner, and the entire menu is going to be breakfast items concatted with lunch items and with dinner items. So if we run this, it'll be a little bit, you know, smushed, but we have brunch is going to be our breakfast and lunch options, happy hour is going to be the lunch and dinner options, and the entire menu is all of the items on the menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me we're going to complete a function that takes in two array parameters and returns an array containing all of the elements of the two input arrays. Your function should create a concatted array variable and assign it to a call to the concat method on the input array applied to the other input array and return the concatted array variable. Below are examples of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, apply concat. Let's take it one more from the top. Copy our stub copy our test cases, create a concatted array variable, concatted array, assign it to the contents of both array1 and array2, which as we showed previously is array1.concat array2, then return concatted array variable. So if we run this and our code looks acceptable, it does, let's copy the completed function Come back to the input window. 
and boom goes the dynamite. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.